Caddis Maximus here. So this video is going to be a review and kind of a comparison of this these one-handed linear type four and a half inch trim saws. I've never taken anything on this channel, any you know money or promotional products, but once I started seeing, I saw a Harbor Freight Bauer in the local discount warehouse. I saw uh, a Genesis brand one, which was like the same thing. Um, you know, I've turned down all these Chinese companies, but one company, uh, this one, uh, sent me an email and they, with the Chinese companies, they're not like contracts or anything like that. They just straight up, you know, you want to review one of our products, we'll send it to you, you know, put a link in our description. So, uh, for a very low amount of commitment and just some, you know, something free that they send you, uh, I decided to go for it. And then after I made the kind of review and tear down, I did a lot more research. I found these saws under 17 different brands, and it even seems like an 18th brand, DeWalt, came out with an atomic four and a half inch trim saw, which is like the tr like the tr true heavy duty uh, version. And it, but all these like Chinese saws, including Porter Cable and Rockwell, are just slight variations in the moldings here, or slight different variations in the casting, but they're all the same ones. Long story short, I would if you really want a trim saw that's going to last and make nice straight cuts, I still recommend the uh, classic Porter Cable 314, although they can be a little bit difficult to find. They show up on eBay, and occasionally the uh, new st old stock will show up on Amazon. These are like the tried-and-true oil-filled warm drive uh, trim saw. Sorry for the uh, negative review, but that's the way it goes when you just send essentially a random person on the Internet a product. I'm not going to disparage them too much. I did a teardown video after this, or as the original video, and then after I went down the rabbit hole. Uh, so I'm going to end up cutting it up more than a Michael Bay film. But here's the DeWalt. This seems to be like the actual heavy-duty version. And then what we have here is we have the Bauer. We have the Porter Cable. We have the Rockwell. We have this brand, Galax Pro. This one that I was sent, hello, there we go, the CX Pro, Genesis, <laughs> Hyper Icon with the K, Extreme Power US, a uh, cordless inner twist version, the infamous Tack Life, this Homeit, a Wen, which used to be a real brand name, a Von Haas, uh, an Avid Power, and a Herzo. Back to the Porter Cable here. Uh, it's really sad, <laughs> the difference between the Porter Cable 314 and uh, this saw. So when companies buy each other, there are rebranded products. That's what you expect, but it is just insanity uh, when it is 17 different brands. Uh, really needs to get under control. It's just different kit configurations. And especially when it's like a cheesy product like that. And you have names like Wen and Porter Cable and Rockwell. And even Harbor Freight Bowers in on the game. I'm going to go ahead and burn my bridge with these guys. Uh, mainly because it's just so cheesy. The laser came with batteries, but one of the batteries was dead. And so that's actually... And I was do, actually trying to give them a halfway cred credible video. But after... You know, the real loose, uh, the super loose guard in here that hits like some internal portion when you're opening and closing it. The fact that the shoe, even though it is really pretty narrow, uh, has a lot of flex and that blows me away because when it comes to four and a half inch trim saws, there's really, there's the high speed 10,000 RPM Makitas, which are awesome for laminates, but they're not particularly torquey. And then there were the Rockwell Porter Cable 314s. These are like an institution. These are the four and a half inch trim saw oil filled worm drive gearbox only four and a half amps at 3800 rpm always seem to have plenty of power these are trying to boost it up they're actually a bigger 5.8 amp motor but you know the build quality it's the one of the issues here is they're trying to sell this for under a hundred dollars and they really need to be making this at a hundred to a hundred and twenty dollar product so they can actually have the quality control on a little bit qual better quality fit and finish to make it a more viable product they're trying to cut just a little bit too many corners and it just uh, does not make for 
something that any that isn't just going to fall apart in a few years if it even that lasts that long not something that you know you're intending to make last for decades and the other point is like this porter cable has a really wide shoe and they've always been kind of uh complaints about them bending but holy smokes the shoe on this thing is twice as rigid as is on this chinese one and uh this thing has half the width it should be way more rigid but it's not and speaking of guards, the way the porter cable is set up, the guard is actually on part of the ball bearing that supports the actual arbor. So the guard on a porter cable is always really nice and pretty darn tight. Just a little bit of play and always has perfectly smooth operation. Where on this one, it's just really bad machining down here and it just allows it to wobble back and forth. And, and the reason that's an issue having that much play, as soon as you start getting any real hours on this thing, Setting it down is going to start walling that out till eventually, and I've seen this on plenty of skill saws that have had a lot of hours, the guard will eventually start impacting the edge of the blade and it will, at some point, it'll cut enough of the guard off so when you set it down, it'll actually just crack a whole portion of it over. The batteries were dead. I actually had one good battery and one dead battery in the laser. That was super frustrating. But I think even more frustrating is knowing that Harbor Freight's selling these for the same price as this company with the plastic guard. They're giving you one of these blades where online where the other, you know, like the infamous tack life, which I blocked all their emails. Um, they at least give you a diamond blade, which can be used in uh, a couple different things. It's kind of odd being a 3 8 diameter hole diamond blade and uh, the carbide blade. Although the Genesis ones I've seen uh, in a local department store is cheap as $55. So I just wanted to see if the laser works. I'll tear this down. Uh, I don't know if I'm really going to do much in the way of a cutting test on this, to tell you the truth, just because... Oh, this saw is just so cheesy. Well, let's get some power. Oh, my little switch fell out here. Come on. There we go. Well, and the Harbor Freight doesn't even include the laser. I guess it does have a laser on it, but it might be nice if they attempted to make it uh, line up with the actual cut line. Uh, you know, what's the point if it isn't properly aligned? So that laser was kind of anemic. You wouldn't ever be able to see that in the daylight. Uh, pretty bulky, but it's even crazier to think the Harbor Freight is selling the same darn saw, but even a cheaper version with a different motor molding, but you'll recognize, particularly it's the these saws, it's this arrow right here, is really the telltale. All the different brands, and this is what's crazy, is there's this brand, and then they have, it's a Steiger, but when they uh, shipped it to me, it came as uh, ExoPower, so they need to get it under control. So many things were issues I was noticing over here, and I did not loosen that. That is a screw that just simply was not fully tightened from the factory. Uh, and once again, the laser's kind of anemic. Might as well give this a quick little run here to see how it uh, fares. I don't like, even though those are safety lockouts, the trigger's really weak. It feels like a little micro switch in there. Um, these things just make it annoying. Mm. A bit of vibration on the uh, deceleration. And to give you an idea of what a smooth, oil-filled worm drive saw should sound like. Nice and smooth, just a little bit on the deceleration. The factory workers must have been particularly unhappy the day they made this. There's another screw that has not been fully uh, torqued down. Ouch. Anyway... Too bad, it's kind of easy to adjust. I could see in some situations where the narrower profile might work just a little bit better for people. One other thing that's interesting, and it may be why they chose this double reduction gearbox, is down here, it makes the bottom of this gear housing, it can be much narrower because they don't need as big a gear there. They can do some of the reduction here and here uh, versus down here. And so that's one thing, is this saw does have uh, a surprisingly big or deep depth of cut. And I guess that's how they're trying to get it is since this has a one and three quarter inch depth of cut, you can cut a uh, surface dimensional lumber, cut off a two by four because it has enough depth. 
and the Porter cable only has a 1 and 3 eighths just because they are using a worm drive and so they have to have a larger uh, casing down here for the driven gear or the other part of the worm drive gearbox. And so that was always the issue with these Porter cables is if they just had a little bit more depth of cut because they only have 1 and 3 eighths inch. And those Genesis ones for $50 but for at least this company uh, they're not doing enough for quality control on the mustard colored handle. Uh, Anyway, at least uh, let's go ahead and rip this thing apart. At least they have a uh, blade clamp. It is, on, since it's on the left-hand side, this is one of those where you actually go, you have to turn it. But this would be a right hand to loosen. And so it's real easy to forget. They just use a socket head cap screw in here uh, that does not actually have a hex on the outside. So it's kind of unfortunate if you ever strip it out. They at least use a 3 8 arbor, which is the same standard that the Porter cable uses, which is smart, so you'll be able to find uh, various blades, etc. for it. With the worm drive saws, they have a preloaded bearing set for the spindle, so the blade has absolutely no lateral play. This spindle is actually pretty tight. I think I felt just a little bit of play. We can see, of course, the first, well, you, it's hard to see, but there is the first ball bearing there. But it is not a sealed, it's just a metal shielded ball bearing, so all sorts of grit's going to get in there. That alone lets you know that this is really more of a short-term, lifetime tool. And uh, that's, all, that's really been the criticism of the China, a lot of these Chinese tool companies and manufacturers. I mean, good Chinese tools, those are Makitas and Milwaukee's, those are all made in China. You know, Milwaukee's owned by a Chinese company. Those are the good Chinese tools. These are just lower end stuff. And... Uh, they kind of think, you know, they're going to jump into a market with a, you know, a neat little product like this. But, you know, they're cutting too many corners. And I don't think they realize that it's actually hurting them worse in the long run than rather than coming out with a product that costs a 120 bucks or 130 bucks, And it's just a lot nicer quality. People will feel better about it in the long run if you do that rather than trying to, you know, give them all this, you know, a big list of features when it doesn't mean anything if you can't rely on the tool uh, for years and years like this. We can just see an example on this part here, like the quality of the rivets, how they're, the metal is just too thin. It's got all split apart. The quality of this casting is just okay, but it is not uh, good by any means. Oh, interesting. Laser licked. I think that was supposed to be a G instead of a C. So I believe this tool is all ball bearing. What they've done is in this gearbox, they've just drilled through holes for those bearings and they did put in plastic caps and we can see it's the oils leaking out of those caps due to a poor fit. Uh, my goodness, this company really should have done a better job. So I'm going to just make sure these screws are tight and this bottom screw here is actually just spinning in the board. They had stripped out from the factory. No wonder, look at the size of the screw. It barely even caught any, it just barely in the plastic. Don't buy these products. And uh, uh, I guess if they're willing to send them to me for free so that I can uh, you know, tell them why you and the, you shouldn't buy them and why they need to uh, get over is because these types of little issues are uh, just terrible. Anyway, I'm going to finish tearing this down. Uh, like this screw that was the one that was stripped out it's like an oddball one with a thicker head on it and just not as long as the others you know i'm going to put all the names of all the different manufacturers that are associated i've seen with this handle or the harbor freight bowers these things really are junk and i would not recommend buying them i'd recommend a porter cable 314 used off of ebay and uh, i will be marking this manufacturer as spam because of the terrible quality that wasn't good for that screw to tell you the truth, I don't even think I'm going to put this back together. I think I'm going to recycle this unit. I wouldn't expect the screws to get quite that shattered. I was aggressive, but geez, that Bosch bit just machined these things. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be recycling this. I don't even want to spend the time to reassemble it. The crux of this video is a Chinese company sends me a low-quality product for free uh, with no other compensation and ends up being so low-quality that I throw the darn thing away and only keep the couple of blades that it came with to use with my porter cable saw. And now I'll still want that the DeWalt uh, atomic left hand blade trim saw that looks so neat. Let's go ahead and pull it. Now we can get this. There's the gearbox. So here's our 
drive shaft that comes with the motor goes into a ball bearing there and then of course into the double reduction gearbox we'll get that apart in a second here let's finish getting this thing apart case is terrible color that's in here there's our safety lockout button uh so, oh there's actually a bit of flex even though it's pretty heavy it's just this insanely thick look how thick that overmold is like three sixteenths of an inch do they say uh wow they're actually calling it pa6 glass fiber 33 so they're calling this glass fiberglass reinforced nylon but they're just using horrible fasteners and no kind of uh torque limitation and when i was saying earlier about a micro switch it literally is a little micro switch that's in there but this one has a little rubber boot so that's something i'll keep just for use using in projects if we can you may be able to read that there it looks like it's a 10 amp rated version of a who knows what switch here's our motor uh, interestingly enough we have a uh kind of a reverse setup where it pulls in through the front and, and through the front and exhausts out through the rear of the motor. Let's try to get this whole assembly out of here. There it is. And then, oop, I need to pull out these wires. Here's our armature. There's our balancing marks. It actually looks okay. There's a decent amount of lacquer, but it's not very heavy. This is not like a grinder duty motor, like that little Harbor Freight Bauer grinder, just pinched contacts on there. And another, this is not a sealed bearing. Their big issue in these tools is because they have lots of grit. Imagine this tool. It came with a diamond grip blade. You're going to be cutting tile. It's going to be hammering that dust right through the motor, right through bearings. They're going to have a little gap between that steel shield and the inner. They are not designed to last at all. Even the rear bearing isn't uh, shielded at all. And it really sucks because, you know, there, I mean... Uh, anyway, you cut it, a lot of time and effort was put into designing this, and it was just uh, too little. It was just not enough, not enough effort. And so if you don't do, uh, you know, if you can't do a job well, don't do it at all. This is a perfect example of that. And this company obviously didn't really watch many of my videos and the brands and types of tools that I uh, review. Finally made it inside the darn gearbox. It was actually surprising. They machined everything out. They pressed fit in all the ball bearings, and then they uh, pressed all these in. So different, uh, slight different sizing issues. Some of these posts were stuck, and you really had to walk it back and forth to get it apart. And here's our input. It's a bevel gear. It is surprisingly a spiral cut bevel gear. They did put in some type of grease, unknown. That bevel gear interacts with this gear here, which is totally stuck in the case. And we can see that's helically cut, which is a little bit surprising. And then, of course, there's our reduction stage there. And then, of course, our output spindle. What's interesting is that there's a reduction here. Be a small gear to bigger gear, and then small gear to bigger gear. But then since this drives a small gear again, you can see how tiny they made that to give it a more of a depth of cut. It's actually the ratio that you're getting is only the difference between this gear here and the size of this one, since this one is smaller than that uh, uh, second idler gear. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of a shame. It's a little bit, they have thick teeth, but it's, it makes a lot of noise, and it's uh, the gears are a little bit thin. So, you know, it was like they were trying. They actually used ball bearings, but these things really just are still junky. I'm sure glad that I did get this for free because uh, at least I was able to make this video and... Uh, not be out the money because I would have done the same thing with one I would have purchased like that Genesis I seen for 55 and I would have just been out $55. That would have sucked. Anyway, stay away from these type of saws. I am going to keep my, you know, maybe someday I'll get that uh, nice DeWalt one. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll be sticking with that Porter cable. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing, even these weird wordy reviews. Until next time. Caddis Maximus out.